I minister by the special grace of God on what I caption surviving the storms. Tell someone by your side, surviving the storms. Tell another person, surviving the storms. Praise God. Genesis chapter 6, verse number 9 to verse 14. Genesis 6, 6, verse 9 to verse 14. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah waited with God. Noah walked with God, sorry. And Noah begot three sons. He had Shem, he had Ham, and he had Jephthah. The earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all the flesh corrupted their ways on the earth. So God said to Noah, if it's the keyboard giving us the trouble, let them shut it down from that place. Please help us. The Lord said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. He said, make for yourself an ark of copper wood. These are also the same kind of woods that are allowed to be used in some of the articles, furniture articles of the holiest of all, like the Ark of the Covenant. Make for yourself an Ark of copper wood. Make room in the Ark and cover it inside out with a pitch. Now, what God was introducing Noah to was the covenant. He said there is corruption everywhere. There is death everywhere. Men are bound to lose their lives. There is all manner of riotous lifestyle. And the people are going to die because the whole earth will be destroyed. He said that there is a system in the kingdom. He said that system is the system of preservation. And that is the covenant. That act is a symbolism of the covenant. It means once you are in this act, we will let us see it in the next chapter. Chapter 7, verse 1 to verse 4, 24. The Bible says that God told Noah that every of the clean beasts, he should take seven. But every of the unclean beasts, he should take two, male and female. And they should be in the ark. And when Noah obeyed the voice of the Lord, we saw what happened. There was preservation. So how can a man survive in the midst of the storm? The covenant. The covenant is a key factor to surviving in the midst of the storm. I don't care what has befallen others. I don't care what is befalling others. But any man that exists in the existential realm of the covenant cannot, cannot, will never see destruction. The covenant is key to preservation. There are certain things that can happen to us. Because we are in a covenant relationship with God. Now, in a covenant relationship with God, it begins with surrendering to Jesus. But that's not all. When you've given your life to Jesus, you must now begin the process of renewing your mind. How? You know, when you give birth to a child today, and that child doesn't get educated, even in the next 50 years, the child won't know how to read. Likewise also, when someone is born again, and that person does not understand spiritual things. That person has not come to a point that he takes on the tool of the principles of God's word to educate 
the human spirit. That man becomes a spiritual illiterate. So it begins with surrendering to Jesus, but there are also other things the believer must do, such as renewing your mind through his word, educating your human spirit, building capacity in the place of prayer. There are myriads of what? A couple of things that the believer, varying things that the believer needs to do. So how can a man survive the storm, the covenant? The covenant. The covenant. Have you taken time to see that if you read through the scriptures, God started giving knew an instruction of the animal to take into the ark in Genesis chapter 6. But he mentioned limited animals. And then in Genesis 7, in Genesis 6, he told him to take all the creeping things that moved upon the earth. In Genesis 7, he also gave him the same instruction and told him to take all the birds of the earth. But he never told him to take the fish. There was not one animal of the water that God gave no instruction to take. Do you know why? What destroys others is their natural habitat. Now I say this to you. Anything that destroys others is an advantage to a, the covenant people. Anything that destroys others, it's an advantage to covenant men. It's an advantage. Thank you. It's an advantage. Whatever destroy others is an advantage to us. One day I read a place that changed my life. One of these journeys with God. Job chapter 22 verse 29. Job 22 29. He says, when men say, When they cast you down, oh, old King James. When they are cast down, yes. When men are cast down, then you shall say, there is a lifting up. And it shall save the humble person. So there are people who are cast down, and there are people that enjoy lifting. It is covenant that distinguish between the two. The covenant. So the same water that killed other animals that we are not taking was a natural habitat of fishes and all the sea animals. Natural habitat. Natural habitat. Natural habitat. Natural. Oh. Isaiah 60 verse 2. He said darkness, pull it up, shall cover the earth. Gross darkness the people. Say, behold, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But there is an exception. That exception, what confers on us, that exception is the covenant of exemption. He said, but there are a group of people that cannot be affected by this. But, but, pull it up, but, he said that the Lord shall arise upon thee. Why? He said, and I shall be their God. Because in covenant, there is a proclamation that these ones are mine. He said, they move from nations to nations. From kingdom to kingdom. These guys, we are violating, they were violating the laws of border, border laws. Nation to nation. Place to place. They would invade borders. The Lord will say, anyone that doesn't open borders for them is gone, is dead. They will open borders. And the Lord said, don't rebuke them. Don't even tell them hello. You can only speak for them. Don't speak against them. He said, but. He said, but. The Lord. Remember when, when Balaam hired Barak to, when Barak hired Balaam to, to curse God's children. He would come to several mountains and then he would offer sacrifices, seven different altars. Nothing was able to touch them. 
He would offer again. Nothing was able to touch them. And then after he did all he could do, seven different kinds of sacrifices upon seven different mountains. Wasted money. Now go go. Wasted money, wasted cattle. And then by the time he was done, he exhausted all he knew to do. He said, surely, not probably. Somebody say, surely. surely. He said, surely, there is no enchantment against Jacob. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because God is speaking to you. There is no divination against Israel. For the shout of the king. So it doesn't matter what they do against you. When they try to get you and they cannot, they term it that you are, you belong to somewhere. And you will even be denying. You'll be denying, I don't belong anywhere. Who says you don't belong anywhere? Don't you belong to census? You think it's a small order. They are saying you belong, you are saying you don't belong. You are denying your identity. You belong, yes, truly I belong. Very well. He said the person, okay. It's of time. It's of time. Don't explain yourself. Praise God. When we talk about, am I talking to somebody here? And the person now says, you are going to native doctor. You cannot tell the person that. <laughs> Where I go to is higher than all the native doctors on earth. Somebody say, I hear. Do you know what we have survived? Men are ranked by what they survived. Do you know what we have survived? I've been here for 26 years. Ministry. We've seen battles. We've seen fights. We've seen betrayals. We've, there is nothing we have not seen. It's been, it's been 26 years of constant war at all times. Constant war at all times. But Jesus said, he said, he said, he was preparing our mind when he wanted to go. In John chapter 17, he said, be of good, you have overcome the world. He said, they persecuted me, they will persecute you. He said, but do not be dismayed. I overcame, you will overcome. Yeah. Somebody say, I hear. I hear. The covenant is our advantage. A young man, his car was stolen. They wanted to take him, connected to this ministry. He ran, they shot the gun, he couldn't enter, he took his car. I was standing at the gate of the school, I looked at him, I said, the car will be found. Three weeks later, he said, I've decided to, you know, he provided God save my life. Just, the car is not a problem. I said, no, the car will be found. No matter how long it takes, it will be found. Two months later, the car was found. It's not something you hear. How was it found? The Lord made those people to make mistakes. They caught them, took them to their den, and discovered that that guy's car was one of them. And when the Lord began speaking to me, the Lord said to me that other things were recovered because the property of the covenanted man was there. Darkness shall cover the earth. Gross darkness, the people. Darkness shall cover the earth. Gross darkness, the people. He said, But the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be upon thee. What happens? Because remember now at this time that darkness is everywhere. In all the, if there is darkness in all the streets, in every yard in the street, and your house is the only place where there is light, what happens? People will come to charge their phone. Look at what happens in verse 3. He said, and the Gentiles shall come. How dare they charge the phone? <laughs> to thy light. And kings to the brightness of that shining. They will begin to ask you, how is this economic hardship not touching you? Because when men are saying there is a casting down, we shall be saying there is a lifting up. Somebody say, I hear. I hear. We didn't say it loud. The covenant is what exempts us from the troubles of this world. The covenant is key to the preservation of the righteous. Please sit down. The covenant. The covenant. We have seen battles. And there is something called the trials of the covenant. One of the articles of the covenant is that your faith will be tried. 
There is something that is called anti, anti covenant practices. Like when the righteous begin to go and visit the native doctor because his phone was taken. The first line of action is code dress. When the righteous began, begin to do certain things because of hardship. But if the righteous sticks with covenant practices, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they saw fire and they refused to bow. By the time they came there, the man in the shadow of the covenant, the one that said, Come, all you who are labored and heavy laden. He didn't ask if you are flying an aircraft, they, they check the weight of bags in order to balance weight. Yes, they check, they tell you this is the minimum you can carry. This is the minimum. Everybody that is boarding this plane, if it is uh, if it is a uh, 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 international flight, I think it's about 16 kg or something. 46. Okay, if over the, uh, what is it called? Ankara, yes. I think between 12 to 16. And then if you are now boarding, uh, uh, if, you are, if you are going to check in your this, it should be between 46 and thereabouts. But even in that 46, you are not allowed to carry more than that. Do you know what they are checking? If everybody should carry 46, this is the weight, the capacity the plane can carry. But Jesus said, come, all you that labor. <laughs> if it is 100, come. <laughs> if it is 300 million, come. Just wherever you are, come. The, no matter the weight, do you know why? He has the capacity to bear all the weight of the earth and not shake. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say, we know that our God is able. But listen, we cannot go against anti-covenant practices. Against covenant practices to anti-covenant practices. We can't. We can't. We can't. And by the time they showed up, before they were landing in the fire, there was already a man in the fire. That's the revelation of air condition. In the midst of heat and fire, some people were not taught. The reeds and the ropes with which they were bound tore off their hands. So, your faith will be tried. Your faith will be tried. But when your faith is tried, don't go the way of Adam. They say to Daniel, you are dead. They will throw you into the lion's den. And they make sure the, de the lions were not fed in the den for several days. Do you know why? There was a conspiracy. Conspiracy is everywhere. If there was conspiracy in heaven, who are you to pastor a church with that conspiracy? In heaven, where there is no sin. Angels conspired. Starting with the devil. But you know, anytime you see conspirators, kick them out of your heaven. You don't negotiate with conspirators. One wrote me a letter among the pastors who didn't know how Censor's Church come. Wasn't there when the vision was formed? Didn't receive the blueprint. Wasn't there when the vision came in 2005? I was in second year. Wasn't there when the blueprint was handed over? Didn't go through the travail of soul that brought this ministry to where it is. Doesn't, no contribution to the travail that saw the vision form. And then when the vision ripened, he joined a few years ago. And then he wrote me a letter that he must be a, a member of the board. And then when my, I must give him a seat equal to his seat. Recently, twenty seven pages petition. How many pages? Twenty seven. He made me to read line by line. <laughs> Uh, 
When I finished reading it, I told Pastor Hillary, I said, if I see him enter the church, I will sack him. Show his picture to all the security. Not Pastor Seat. I dash him to any other church. Want to plot a queue under my watch? Ah, no. And then he wrote, you read the letter. He wrote, he said, I should give him Siena, most. <laughs> and he wrote another person's name and said, I should give the person what? Toyota Corolla. That if I don't do it, that we are gone. I said, okay. You know, the Bible says, for thou hast taught me to war. And you have, you have taught my right hand to fight. We, we are not afraid of fight. No, no. We are fight ourselves. So I said, bring it on. So we reconvened immediately the, the meeting of the council and uh, the, the board of trustee of the church and removed him immediately from being a member of the church. Because authority is conferred on us to be able to do that. <laughs> That's why, listen, toughness is needed in leadership. All these people that keep telling you you are too tough, they are telling you, Elijah, come from the mountain. It's, it's insanity for someone to think we've got to this level. Being soft. No. We've seen things. Every day we wage war and battles. Then we are not afraid of it. Because greater is he that is in us. Not he that is in the world. So what be tied that person that conspired against us? They went and conspired against Israel to curse Israel. The more they did, the more they saw that there was a shout. And the man screamed and said, surely, not probably. Surely, there is no enchantment against Israel. No divination against Jacob. For any time you conspire, the shout of the king is in their midst. No conspiracy. No divination against Israel. For the shout of the king is among them. The shout of the king is among them. The shout of the king is among them. So the Bible said the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy shining. Do you know why? Because in the midst of darkness everywhere, it is only your house that has light. Now, let me teach you something. It's important to note this. If you have a friend who is an armed robber, tolerate the person. If you have a friend who has flippant mouth, know how to manage the person. But if you have an envious friend, it is envy that made the devil desire the thrones of God. When he was desiring that throne, you would think he was there when God formed the heaven. <laughs> he said, I will go up. I will take his throne. I will be like the Almighty. And I will sit above the thrones of God. This thing played out in a letter that I was given. 27 letters. It's not page thing. It's not a joke. Not a joke. Not a single joke. You must make me a secretary of the board member. Like how? Thank God this church is ruled by constitution and it's not a daft person that wrote the constitution. I said, okay. When I finished, was there because one else, I said, no. You don't negotiate with betrayal. No negotiation. Because such person can kill you. Mm, such person can kill you. Do you know what I learned from my father do in Genesis chapter? The Bible talks about the devil in, in Isaiah 12, 12 to 14 and speak about the devil in Genesis chapter 11, 12 to 11, chapter 12. She kicked him out of the heaven. She 
I see the light of God rising over your life. Amen. That amen is not a loud one. Amen. So the flood that drowned men outside the ark of Noah lifted the ark of Noah. So whatever has killed men outside, outside the ark is an advantage to those who are in the covenant. So the water that killed people in the days of Noah helped the ark of Noah to sail. Helped the ark of Noah to sail. How does the believer survive the storm? Number one is through the preservation power of the word of God. Through the preservation power of God's word. Through the preservation power. Somebody say preservation power. Psalms 40 verse 11. Psalm 40 11. He said, With hold not thou thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness, thy word truth is God's infallible word. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. Get me 6.24 of the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 6.24. Deuteronomy 6.24. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our, go our good always. That he might preserve us alive as it is this day. And so the word of God is God's preservation power. When you know what is written, when you do what is written, and when you declare what is written, three things. You know what is written, knowledge. You do what is written, you apply it because faith without work is dead. And then you declare what is written. So you don't declare your circumstance. You declare what the word is saying. His name was removed of amongst those that will be promoted, right? Your name was removed. Uh, they stepped it. They stepped it down at the faculty level. Uh, but not just us, anyway. So some were actually saying that that I've embarked on study leave since September of 2020. So, but my professors and the day they agreed that final at the faculty, all the professors in my, in my department, they weren't around. So, on getting to the visit office, um, they called us to come and make some photocopies because at the moment, the one in the dean's office was not working. So, on getting to the dean's office, my friend that used to do all those things for me, I called him. So he said that my form was now among the people, among the forms that was going to the DC's office. For the promotion. So it was removed. It was removed by someone. And then he sent me a text. I, I, I happened to read that text in the midnight. Listen to me. The spiritual controls the physical. There is a realm that controls here. If you get it right there, everything falls into play here. So when I was done praying that night, I sent him a text with one line. I think one or two lines. He settled. And that's what happened. Not just did he get his promotion, he also got approval to go for his study leave abroad. Now, what we did was that when we prayed, you know, if you read John chapter 2, you discover the Bible said that there was a wedding in Canon of Galilee. And then as people were wedding, the Bible said that their wine ran out. Wines don't have legs. Sir. Somebody ran with it. On the day of a man's celebration, somebody was there stealing somebody's joy. But thank God that there is a God who was invited. He's Shekinah. 
For the fact he was there, the people became covenant people. So what did he do? He gave them the best of the wine from almost nothing. When they were just waiting that they would be put to shame because the people that took the wine must have stayed one place waiting for the embarrassment to happen because you would rather not have food in Jewish wedding than wine. They waited and all of a sudden they saw the best of the wine that they didn't know where it came from. That's what happens to us. They thought and they think they have put us down. All of a sudden we are rising from places. Because the Lord is our light. Who shall we be afraid of? That person is not born. The Lord is our light. So I tell you this. Build more covenant relationship with God. Don't bother what men do. They will revile you. They will persecute you. They will gang up against you. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I am enough. One man with Jesus is more than a majority. One man with Jesus is an army. It doesn't matter the army that come against us. Elijah was not with any bow. Was not with any sword. He wasn't with any equipment. Not one. He was up on the mountain with just a scroll, the word of God. Excuse me, sir. Don't put confidence in human strength. Don't put confidence in what you know. When all these soldiers came, he was on the mountain. And then his servant began to worry. He said, Lord, open his eyes that he might know that one man that is with God is more than a majority. When he opened his eyes, he saw and then he saw millions of angels on chariots guarding the mountain. The Bible says he went into rest. We are not alone. Ah, we are not alone. How, how long did you stay in the bush? Four days. To be killed. To be slaughtered. This thing we are saying is not a joke. To be killed, to be slaughtered. Four days. It was you that got to me. It was you, the wife, that got to me. On Facebook, right? Messenger. And then prayer went in. God will bless you so much. So much. This is an instruction. When God did bless you, this woman, this woman, to see what this woman did to me, you see what this woman she has capacity to call someone at 2 a.m. She wasn't sleeping. You see this one? If they say you have a problem with one of your kidneys, she will give you two. Because you know friends when adversity comes. Friends are not known in celebration. Rise to your feet wherever you are. Four days in the bush. Four days. And she kept on crying. She kept on I will finish praying now. She will call again. I said, what kind of a woman is this? All the time. And she is a faith-filled woman. I know who I believe. Four days later. What was supposed to be a death situation. Many died there. His own preserved. <laughs> and now I know she attacked. We control things here from there. Excuse me. That's why darkness. God called for light from darkness. So men who rule the dark hours control the day. Activities of the night control activities of the day. Because you are my king. You are the lion and the lamb. There is nothing you cannot do. There is nothing you cannot change, oh, because I know my God is the lion and the lamb. 